Hello everyone. A warm welcome to each and every one from Thinknix Technologies. We are back again with one more exciting video. This time we will be discussing about OPA, that is Open Policy Agent. This tutorial has been prepared by Aman Kumar and Deepthi Narayan. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. First, we will discuss what is policy. Then we will have a look at the problem statement which OPA is solving. We will later discuss what is OPA and at the end we will see how does OPA work. Let us start with what is policy. Policy consists of set of rules. Say for example your organization might have a no work from home policy. Before we buy online we first need to log in or sign in. Right? This is an example of policy in software systems. Policies assist in decision making. If you are from a programming background, you may relate this to the conditional statement if else. Say for example, if you are an authorized user to access the company's portal, then only you can log in or else the access will be denied. To ensure the best quality of a product, every organization has its own set of techniques, tools and procedures. The measurable qualities can include performance, scalability, ease of use, accuracy, etc. We can perform all these quality checks manually as well, but this is time consuming and error prone. The better alternative to this could be to use policy as code. Policy as code will automate the deployment of best practices. It is the principle of writing code in a high level language like Python, YAML or Lego for controlling, managing and automating the process. The specific language usually depends on which policy as code management and enforcement tools we are using. Policy as code can be applied to all phases of development such as design, testing, deployment, etc. So, how does policy as code work? Policies are code based and reside in text based files. It uses policy engine which accepts query and some data. It takes policy as the input, processes it and generates the query result. Let's now talk about the need of OPA. Consider our Thinknix assessment platform. This is an initiative by Thinknix where you can assess your knowledge on the latest cloud native technologies. TAP provides services like registering, assessments, rewards in the form of Nix coins and achievement patches. Alex wants to take a technology assessment on TAP. He will sign up before taking the assessment. So do you think he can access question bank when he signs up? No, right? But a developer named Chris of Thinktix tab site has the right to do so. But what about Chris accessing Alex's contact details or what if Chris accidentally deletes Alex's next coins? Here is where authorization comes into picture. The authorization system could be internal or external like AWS IAM. But there are some drawbacks. Let's assume that the services are connected to SQL and MongoDB. If we want to change the existing policies or add new policies, we will need to change in all the backends. In our case, both on SQL and MongoDB. Trying to unify the policies are highly complicated as well. There is a good possibility that each service is written in different language and these platforms have their own authorization mechanism. This is where OPA comes into action. It creates a unified method of enforcing security policy in the stack. Let us define OPA. The Open Policy Agent, also known as OPA, is an open source general purpose policy engine that can be used to enforce policies in Terraform, Kubernetes, microservices and many more. It uses a policy language called Rego, which allows you to write policies declaratively as code and then use them as part of decision making process. OPA was first developed by Styra and is currently a part of CNCF. 
Netflix is one of the examples that employs OPA to manage access to internal API services. Let's talk about some of the benefits of using OPA. OPA unifies policy enforcement across the stack. It decouples policy decision making from policy enforcement. Services offload policy decision to OPA by executing queries. It uses a simple declarative language called REGO. It allows you to have policy as a code. Let's have a look at the OPA policy decision model. As already mentioned, policies can be written as code using REGO. REGO prefers the policy to be human readable and was inspired by Datalog. It also has a very simple syntax. OPA takes input as JSON and checks the REGO policies against it. Because OPA and REGO are domain agnostic, you may use them to specify nearly any type of invariant in your policies. The request comes to your service, which then needs to decide whether to allow or deny the request. OPA validates the query and executes the REGO code for the specific data inputted and returns the result in the form of allowing or denying. Let's see some of the scenarios where OPA could be used. Who has access to which resource? The capabilities of the operating system on which a container can run. At what time of the day may the system be accessible? Allowing or denying Terraform changes based on compliance or safety rules. Enforcing Kubernetes admission controllers to validate API requests. Now take a look at the demo on how to use the Rego Playground. We shall create OPA policy using this playground. To do so, first we need to go to play.openpolicyagent.org. As discussed earlier, there are three inputs into the decision-making process. One is the data, the other is the input, and the third is the policy. And this is the workspace where we are going to create the policy. We shall now take a look at a very simple example to understand how does OPA work. The data is the field which OPA refers while making the decision. The data must be in JSON format. Here we have specified two keys. One is the name, which is having the value as Alice. The other is the operation, which is having the value read. This means that Alice has the authorization only to read. The input triggers the decision computation. This also should be in JSON. Here we want to check if Alice can do the read operation. As per the data here, it should be true, isn't it? Now let's see how do we create the policy for the same. The policy specifies the computational logic. Here we are specifying the package name as play. We are taking a variable called as allow and setting the initial value as false. Now this allow will take either the value true or false based on the condition which we have specified here. Note that both line number 6 and 7 has to be true in order to make allow as true. Here we have told that input.name should match data.name. So input name is Alice and data name is Alice. Both are matching, hence this will be true. Similarly, input operation should match the data operation. Here both are read. So line number 7 will also be true. Hence, allow will take the value as true. If I'm going to click on evaluate, you will see that the allow has taken the value as true. Now, if I change Alice's operation from read to write and click on evaluate, allow will take the value as false because Alice can perform only the read operation. Similarly, if I'm going to keep the operation as read, but change the name from Alice to Bob, this will also result in false 
because there is no data with the name Bob. Thank you. Thank you for watching our tutorial. We really hope you liked our video. Please do like and subscribe and click on the link below to know more about ThinkNix. Do let us know what topic you are interested to know next in our comment section below. Thank you. Abhiyanto. We shall see you soon in our next video. Stay tuned for more updates from us.